start for his grace. Let me know when you're ready. Glory to God. Signal me with your hand up in the air. What a mighty God we serve tonight. Glory to God. We praise the Lord tonight for God is good. Glory to God. God to hear me. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. What a wonderful thing to be a child of God tonight. Praise God. We honor the Lord. We honor the Lord. Oh, I give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. And his mercies endure it forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom the Lord has redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Yes, Jesus. Glory to God. We thank the Lord tonight. We on. We give God praise tonight for his grace. We thank God for his strength. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. We want to greet everyone in Jesus' name. Praise God. We thank God for many blessings towards us because it's the Lord's mercy is why we are here tonight. Amen. So I want to ask a question tonight. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Praise God. God is good. I say, God is good. Praise God. Welcome everyone tonight. Praise God to a Paul Friday. Praise God where God has a miracle with your name on it. Praise God. So we thank God tonight, amen, for all the saints of God everywhere. We thank God for the joy of the Lord, the strength of God. We thank God because the blessings of the Lord makes rich. And he added no sorrow to it. Amen. We are so grateful tonight, amen, for all the saints of God everywhere. We thank God, amen, for Pastor Dorothy Campbell down in Florida. Praise God. We give God praise for that awesome woman of God. We thank God, amen, for Pastor, as a matter of fact, Elder Campbell. God bless you tonight, man of God. Amen. Doing a great work down there. Glory to God. We honor the Lord for you tonight. We thank God for Pastor and General Overseer Monica Elizabeth Paul, all the way in Nassau, Bahamas, grace and peace be unto you, women of God. Amen. We thank God for you and the saints of God. Amen. We thank God tonight, amen, for Pastor Wong in Toronto, Canada. God bless you, Pastor Wong. Grace and peace be unto you. We thank God for you today because God is good. Amen. And we celebrate you tonight in Jesus' name. Oh, Pastor Owen Gale down there in Jamaica. Sunshine, Jamaica. Pastor Owen Gale. Amen. Assistant Pastor. Amen. Joan Williams and Joy Marshall up in Limage. We honor God for you all tonight and we give God praise. Amen. For the blessings of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. We thank God again. Amen. For my wife, Evangelist Beverly Smith. Amen. Say greetings to everyone tonight in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what? Guess what? Amen. Dana, my technician, is not here tonight. Amen. So we have a deputy. Praise God. We have somebody deputizing tonight, an amateur. So if things don't go right the way it should, be here with us because we have an amateur. Praise God. And the amateur is Evangelist Priscilla Smith Campbell. Amen. She hasn't looked in my direction to signal me if everything is good. Praise God. So we thank God tonight. Seems like things are running. So we give the Lord praise tonight. Amen. And we bless God for his many blessings towards us today. What a great evangelist, Sheila Pettiford. Amen. Down there in the Carolinas. God bless you tonight. We greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Martima Armstrong, we thank God for you. Deanna Brenham, in Nassau, Bahamas, grace and peace be unto you. Praise God. We thank God for Missionary Linda Marcelli. We want to celebrate you tonight. Angela Green, God bless you. Evangelist Dennis Danayo Gilvey, grace and peace be unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless Evangelist Mavis Burgess. We thank God for you tonight. May the blessings of God ever be upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we want to celebrate Dana tonight. She's taking a little time to have a day to spend with her friends. Amen. Because of her graduation. She deserves a day. Glory to God. So we thank God tonight. We're praying for her. Lana Rose, we thank God for you. 
We bless God for you tonight. Grace and peace be unto you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. So we have, amen, special prayer requests tonight. Praise God. And we want you to continue to pray for these names that I'm going to call tonight. We thank God, amen, for Anna Reporter. Grace and peace be unto you, woman of God, evangelist, Dr. Anna Reporter. God bless you tonight. Praise God. I want to continue praying tonight for, amen, Mother Ione Clark. I want you to put her name down. Keep praying for her. Praise God. Amen. Keep asking the Lord to touch her. Ask the Lord to strengthen her body. Amen. I know that God touch her. We don't want to, amen, negate the fact that God is a healer. But we want you to remember to keep mentioning her name before God. Each time you bow your knees before the Lord. That God will expedite the manifestation of her healing in Jesus' name. Yes, God bless you, woman of God, pastor and overseer, Monica Paul. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you, woman of God. Amen. You know that we love you and we're praying for you. In Jesus' name. Yes, Anne-Marie Porter. Oh, we thank God for you again. God bless you. Roberta Stewart, we thank God for you. David the Giant Killer. God bless you, Minister Hansen. Grace and peace be unto you. Tonight. Oh, yes, we thank God for Evangelist Barbara Morgan. I don't know if she's back yet, but we want you to know that we are praying for you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Tonight is Power Friday. Amen. Tonight when we anoint you with oil, we pray the prayer of faith. Amen. And we trust and believe God to raise you up. Amen. We do it according to the word of God. So if you're sick in your body tonight, whether you're sick, yes or no, you know what we do on Friday night. Get your oil bottle. Amen. And keep it very close to you and wait for my instruction in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We thank God for missionary Avery Lewis Smith. Grace and peace be unto you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so we have special requests tonight, and we usually pray for the special request at the end, amen, of the message. We want to pray tonight, amen, for Lloyd Myers. Lloyd Myers, write his name down. He need a miracle touch from God, amen. I say Lloyd Myers need a miracle touch from God. So you put his name down, and at the end we are going to pray for him. That God will touch him in his body. Also, Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann. He, she need a touch from God. She need a miracle touch. Amen. And we're going to ask everyone to put her name down. And we're going to pray for her tonight. Amen. That God will touch her. Amen. Also, we have, amen, Twisha. Amen. Twisha. Amen. We want to keep praying for Twisha. Amen. She disappeared or missing Amen. For the past couple of weeks, I believe. Amen. We want to put her on our prior list. I pray for her and think was an amen one well, these night. But to, we want to continue praying for her. Amen. And the family, Karim, we want to know we are praying for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, we have a special prayer request from Del Rose and John. Del Rose and John. Amen. A husband, wife. Out of London, England. Amen. They both have COVID. Praise God. And John is experiencing some severe complications. So we're going to ask you tonight to agree with me. To pray for Del Rose and John who have COVID. And John is experiencing severe complications. We believe that God is still a healer. We believe that God is still a deliverer. We believe that there's nothing too hard for God. So I want you saints of God tonight to trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. The Bible said in all of our ways we should acknowledge him. And he will direct our part. All right. Just clap your hands right where you are. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. I think I'm going to go straight to the word tonight. And at the end, praise God, we're going to have a worship. We're going to have songs of praise unto God. It all depends, amen, how Amen. The technician feel right now. 
But God is good. I say God is good all the time. Come on, clap your hands right where you are. Amen. Come on, clap your hands in your house. If you cannot praise God anywhere, you can praise him in your house. You can praise him right where you are. Maybe you're in the hospital. Maybe you're in the kitchen. Maybe you're in the bathroom. Wherever you are. On your job, in your store, in your car, on the bus. God have a miracle with your name on it. While you still standing praising God tonight, we want to let you know that God is faithful. We are serving a faithful God. All right, turn your Bibles with me, please, to 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse amen, 19 and 20. Thank God for the pastor of this church, Bishop Barney Brown and Lady Brown. We greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Bishop, in Jesus' name. All right, turn your Bibles tonight. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 19 and 20. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 19 and 20. Glory to God. Amen. I believe God is going to do something special tonight. Glory to God. I believe that God has a miracle for somebody tonight. I believe God. Come on, just lift your hand and say, I believe God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Samuel chapter 12 verse 19 and verse 20. But when David saw that his servant whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servant, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anoint himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Can I read that scripture again? Because something might, that ju might just jump out on you. 2 Samuel 12, 19 and 20. But when David saw that the servant whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, therefore, David said unto his servant, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel. And came into the house of the Lord and worshipped my God. And then he came to his own house. And when he required, they sat bread before him. And he did eat. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you tonight for the clarity of thoughts. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for the anointing that makes preaching easy. We ask God that you'll unctionize me again to flow in the sequence of your revelation, to pour into the lives and the hearts of your people. Lord, we ask God that you show yourself strong and mighty on the behalf of them that trust you. Lord, for some trust in horses and some in chariots. But, O oh God, we will remember the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Have your way tonight, God. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our spirit. Let your name, O oh God, be glorified. Somebody need a touch from you tonight, God. Somebody need a miracle, a supernatural breakthrough. Touch, O oh God, them in their bodies, whether they're in the hospital, whether they're at home, whether they are in the job. Wherever they are, God, I ask that you touch them today. Whether they're driving in the car, Lord, there is no distance in prayer. Show yourself strong tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you and we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to draw your attention, praise God, to the 20th verse. And David arose from the earth and washed. David arose from the earth and washed and anoint himself 
and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house and when he required they sat bread before him and he did eat. God sent me to tell somebody tonight, Amen, get up. Wash your face. Get up. Wash your face. I want you to know that as a child of God, sometimes we have to deal with some hard issues. Yes. Every child of God, irrespective of who you are, sometimes or the other, you have to deal with some hard issues. Hard issues, amen, and like I said many times and times before, that sometimes your relationship with God will force you into a place of deep questioning, especially when your situation is contradicting a child of God's identity. You heard me say that over and over again, amen, but it is not only a fact, it is the truth. Because it doesn't matter who you are, how long you're saved, your title, your position in the church, sometimes you have to deal with some hard issues. You cannot run from it. You cannot hide from it. Sometimes it's not your fight, it's the fight finds you. So I would like to ask you a question tonight. What do you do when the fight finds you? Glory to God. When the fight finds you, you have to totally depend on God. Amen. To defend you because God promised to defend the righteous. I want you to know as a child of God that you've got to understand that life does not stop just because we have, uh, we've been hurt, we lost some things, or dealing with some difficult situation. It doesn't stop life. It doesn't slow down life because we are tried or need help if, keep, if we just keep moving on. In other words, amen, when life throws the worst of you, when life comes against you with negative things, you cannot, amen, just fold up your hands and lay back and fall over and die. Ah, because life does not stop because you're hurting. Life does not stop because you're facing a difficult situation. But I want you to know that before you know it, sometimes someone else is coming your way, and if you don't get moving, it will run you over because everybody has a situation and a problem that they have to deal with. So therefore, we must learn to properly respond, amen, respond to effective things uh, respond to difficulties and challenges when the enemy attack us. We've got to learn to understand that it doesn't matter how difficult things look. Amen. You can always move forward. Amen. So I come to tell somebody tonight, amen, you should always go forward in God and not allowing your situation, amen, to hold you hostage, to hold you down, to bring you to a place, amen, where you start to uh, doubt the word of God. You start to doubt God's word to the point where your very confession is contradicting the principles of the word of God. So I want to tell somebody tonight, amen, that sometimes we've got to just stand up and deal with it. It was John that write to the church and he said from the days of John the Baptist till now the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violent take it by force. Oh, here when you look at the word of God tonight in our text the Bible speak about David. The Bible said David therefore, amen, pleaded with God to save his child because his child, his son from Bathsheba was sick fell sick and David fasted amen and David went in all lie all night on the ground with sackcloth and ashes and start to pray praise God pre adventure God would deliver this boy from death praise God but some way or the other God did not deliver him 
Because it's not every time, amen, God deliver you out of a problem. Sometimes God deliver you in the situation. Sometimes God deliver you from the situation. Amen. But God is always in control. And David fasted and David cried unto the Lord. He beseeched God that God would have mercy upon this boy. Amen. But the Bible said the boy died. Glory to God. And when David saw that his servant whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. How many of you sometimes, amen, you seek God to remove or to bring deliverance or to bring healing or to work out a situation and instead of the situation gets better, it gets worse. I know that many of you tonight, amen, can identify with that. And that's why you've got to walk by faith. The Bible said that we walk by faith and not by sight. So sometimes the situation, amen, does not change, but it doesn't mean that God has changed. Because we serve an unchangeable God in an un in a changeable world. So I want to encourage everyone tonight that is going through a challenge. We want to encourage everyone tonight, amen, that is dealing with personal issues and personal situation that seems like it will never change. I want you to know, amen, that God is still working behind the scene to bring your deliverance. And sometimes the enemy use past bad experience. Ah, so as a point of reference to get you to a place of discouragement. But I come to tell you in here, don't let your past bad experience uh, ruin your future. Amen. Because God is still a faithful God. It was Jeremiah that said, It's the Lord's mercies while we are not consumed, neither his compassion fail it not. He said, They are new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. Here is David, the worshiper, David, the one, amen, that God called a man after his own heart. Here is David, praise God, that was anointed with a triple fold anointing. Here was David, praise God, one that God loved. David was the sweet psalmist. David was the worshiper. David was the one, praise God, that God has delivered from the lion, delivered from the beard, delivered from Goliath. And here is one, amen, that in the dew of the night, David would lie down, put his hand behind his head, look up into the heavenly, and give God glory and give God praise. It was David that was said, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shoot forth his hand to work. But David find himself now in a situation where he need God to bring deliverance to his son. But the Bible said the child died. Praise God. And David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his garment. The Bible said he changes apparel, but one thing that I learn here from David's life in this particular color scripture is that, amen, when you do all you can do, amen, and it seems like nothing happened, is not the time to fold up tent, is not the time to throw in the towel, is not the time to wallow in discouragement, is not the time, amen, to sit down, lay back, and feel sorry for yourself. The Bible said after David perceived that the child died, the Bible said that David got up and washed. Glory to God. I want to tell you something, child of God. Amen. You've got to learn to get up after a bad situation. You've got to learn to get up when things, amen, and life has dealt you a bad hand. You've got to learn to get up, praise God, when it seems like all hell is breaking loose around you in your family and in your life. The Bible's Bible said that David not only get up, uh, it means to change your position, it means to come into being of who you are and lift yourself out of the place of discouragement and recognize that whatever the outcome, God is still 
still in control. The Bible said he washed his face. Amen. To wash your face means don't let your past ruin your presence. To wash your face it means don't let your past ruin your present. Get up, wash your face. Amen. Stop believing the lies about who they say you are so that you can become who you are. Amen. And who God meant for you to be. Uh, I come to tell you in here that the devil is a liar. Amen. Uh, he always want to attack you. Amen. Because your position might not change. Glory to God. Your circumstances might not change. But you've got to stand in the position and in the place. Amen. Where the devil can shake you because you're standing on the promises of God. The devil is a liar. Your present situation, child of God, is not an indication of your future potential in God. So God said to tell you tonight that whatever you're going through, amen, whatever the circumstances might look like, amen, you ought to wash your face. Wash your face, amen, uh, and stop clinging to issues from the past. Wash your face, amen, and wash off the residue, amen, that can easily detect uh, your situation and your problems and the countenance of your personality. Sometimes you've got to wash your face. It is possible to be delivered from something and still not washed. The effect of it out of your lifestyle. Glory to God. So when you wash your face, it means that you're washing the past away. To wash your face means wash everything off. Amen. You've got to wash. Amen. Everything off that you have collected a long life journey. Amen. And prepare yourself for where you are going. The Bible said that upon receiving the news, amen, that his son was dead. Number one, David got up. Number two, he washed and he anointed himself. Number three, he changed his clothes. And number four, he went to the house of God and started to worship. And many of you may be saying, wait a minute here, his son just dead, just died, and yes, this is the truth. But David realized that there was nothing he could do about it. He realized, amen, that there was nothing he could do about it, and you've got to understand that there are some circumstances and situation that you've got to deal with, and there is nothing you can do about it. So the Bible says that David got up. Amen. The boy was already dead. Glory to God. But the Bible said that David refused to mourn any longer. He saw God. He got up and started to deal with the things that were still within his control. He decided to live the rest of his life. It was the son that died. It was not him. Glory to God. I want you to understand, child of God. And that's why God told me to tell you that the first thing you need to do is to get up from where you are. Get up from all of that bad circumstances and situation and don't feel sorry for yourself. Here is the young man that died, but David, he could have feel sorry for himself. He could have laid there and waddle, amen, and waddle in his difficulties, in his challenges, and he could have feel sorry for himself to the point that he would have given up and stop giving God the praise. But David washed his face. Glory to God, anoint himself with oil in the midst of a bad situation. In the midst of death when it seems like nothing else can happen. Amen. Seemed like nothing good would come out of this. The Bible said that the man of God get up. Glory to God and washed himself and anoint himself with oil and change his garment. He changed his personality. He changed, amen, the way he feels. He changed the way he looks. Amen. And get back on post and start to give God some worship. I told you many times and time before that the devil have a tough time with a worshiper. Because a worshiper, amen, when they worship God, they put the emphasis on God and not on human achievement. I come to tell those of you tonight that are going through the 
challenges of life. You may be sick in your body. I don't know what you're dealing with tonight. You might be dealing with cancer. You might be dealing with a tumor. You might be dealing with mental depression. You might be dealing with a job loss. No money in your pocket. Don't know where the next meal coming from. You might be dealing with a family issue. Oh God, but I come to tell you in here, don't you sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Don't you sit there and wallow in your sorrow. I come to tell you it's time to get up. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but God show me to tell you tonight is to get up. Get up means to lift yourself up. Get up means to get yourself back together. Praise God because God did not choose and call you, amen, to wallow in sorrow and feel sorry for yourself. Because the Bible said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. So David, glory to God, he refused to get stuck in the place of loss. Don't get stuck in the place of your loss. I call these places grave sight. Glory to God. Grave sight are a place you visit to remember the lost. Amen. They were never intended to be your residence. Glory to God for the living. Because grave sites are places that you stop by, but you do not stay there. Glory to God. So I come to tell somebody in here, don't make a grave site. Amen. Hold you hostage. Don't let your situation hold you down. Lift up yourself. Pull yourself together. It was the same David that right. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up the everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. I want to tell somebody tonight, amen, that you have to deal with the thing that you're dealing with, but you are not dealing with it all by yourself, because I heard God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So I came here to tell you tonight, child of God, amen. Secondly, you must wash and anoint yourself. David knew that whatsoever it was that he did, it did not determine who he was. His situation did not define him. His circumstances did not define him. He was God's anointed. Yes, and the fact that you are anointed, sometimes you will lose some things along the way. For life is a journey. It is not a destination. And on the journeys of life, sometimes you have to cry. On the journeys of life, sometimes you suffer disappointment. You suffer discouragement. So discouragement was nothing new to David. Because it was David that come to Ziglag. And when he came to Ziglag, the whole city was burned with fire. The Bible said that the city was burned and the very men that was with David, his warriors, they became so discouraged. They cry, they mourn, they weep. The Bible said that they become so discouraged. Amen. And they weep till they had no more strength to weep. But I come to tell you, the Bible said that David refused to wallow in discouragement. Why? Because as a worshiper, a praiser, you've got to know that you've got to trust God when you cannot trace him. Whether you feel him, yes or no, you've got to have a confidence in your spirit that it doesn't matter how long it might take. The one thing that I know is that just when I needed him most, he's going to step right in. He never fails me yet. I heard somebody sing a song and say, Jesus, never fails me yet. He said, everywhere I go, I want the world to know that Jesus never fails me yet. I come to tell you tonight, child of God, that he is there no failure in God. So the first thing that David did when he found out that the boy was dead, the Bible said he got up and he washed himself. He washed his face. He washed off the sorrows off his face. He 
wash off the discouragement off his face. He washed off the complacency off his face. He was not mad with God. He was not bitter with God. And secondly, you must also know that you've got to wash yourself and don't let the devil see you sweat. Uh, David knew, amen, that whatever it was that he did in the past that brought this shame and disgrace and caused this boy to die, it did not determine who he was. But David knew that he was an anointed vessel of God. He knew, praise God, that God was still on his side. You may have made some mistake in your life, amen, but they do not define you, child of God. They do not define who you are. You must learn to wash your past off. You must learn to walk in the anointing that God has declared over your life. Amen. And thirdly, the Bible says that David, he changed his clothes. You must not look at where you came from, but look at where you're going. These clothes may be old association. These clothes may be old habits or thoughts that are remnant of your past. Glory to God, but there comes a time in your life. You've got to change your association. You've got to change your habits. You've got to change the way you look at things and look at it from God's perspective. Can I preach to somebody tonight? You've got to take them off and put on that communication, that communi that which communicates with your future. You've got to take off the past, your past failure, your past rejection, your past mistake. You've got to take them off and put on the future, amen, perspective, looking at God, knowing that God is still able to bring me out. Glory to God, for the Bible said that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Glory to God, and last but not least, least after David got up, after David washed his face, after David anointed himself, glory to God, after he changed his clothes, glory to God, I come to tell somebody in here, you've got to take off the garment of mourning and put on the garment of praise, you've got to take off the garment of sorrow and put on the garment of joy, for God promised to turn my mourning into dancing. Glory to God. I want the devil to know I'm putting on the garment of righteousness and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The worship is what I do. Glory to God. So the Bible said after the man get up and pull himself together and wash off sorrow off his face and wash off pain off his face and wash off everything thing that the devil had thrown at him. He washed his face, glory to God. And then he anointed himself with oil. And the anointing upon David's head. It was nothing new to David. But it was on three occasions that God poured oil on David. It was Samuel that poured the horn of oil upon David and anointed him to become king over Israel. It was Samuel it was Samuel that anointed him the second time. It was the same prophet Samuel that poured oil on David the third time. But I heard David say this time in Psalm 23, I've got a new anointing. For yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, ah, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I come to tell somebody in here, the Bible said the man didn't have Samuel to anoint him in this particular situation. He didn't have his friends to anoint him. Not even God has poured anointing upon his head because David has stumbled. David has sinned and fall down and this son was conceived. Amen from an adulterous affair. But David said, Amen. I must get up out of these ashes. I must get up out of this place of sorrow and place.
price are paid for weeping men to for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. And Priscilla, the Bible said, David grabbed his own oil, glory to God, and pour oil upon his own head. Glory to God and anoint himself with oil. I come to tell somebody in here that you might not have anybody to anoint you. You might not have anybody to pour oil on you. But there comes a time in your life and that is now. Glory to God. You've got to anoint your own self. And let that devil know I'm not dead yet. And not only anoint yourself, you've got to change your perspective and see things from God's perspective. You've got to see things differently. You've got to see things that in the future everything is going to be all right. So the Bible said he anoint himself and finally finally glory to God he went to the house of God he did not went to do his house first he went into the house of God and began to worship here is a man here is a man that have a dead son here is a man that fasted and prayed in sackcloth and ashes and asked God for deliverance for his child and the boy died seem like God has failed him. It seemed like God has let him down. But David did not become bitter. He did not get angry with God. The Bible said he got up out of the ashes and shake himself. You've got to get up and shake yourself. You've been wandering in that sorrowful place too long. You've been crying and mourning too long. You've been complaining too long. You've got to Shake yourself. Pull yourself together, man. And let that devil know that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, glory to God, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. And the Bible said, David, my God, he shake himself, wash his face. I come to tell somebody tonight, you gotta wash that thing off. Wash this off your face. Wash off failure. Wash off complaining, uh, wash off discouragement, uh, glory to God, uh, and lift up your head, uh, and not only lift up your head, uh, but I heard the man of God said, uh, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, uh, from whence cometh my help, uh, my help cometh from God, uh, you've got to know where your help come from, uh, because sometimes in life, uh, people will let you down, uh, they will deceive you, uh, they will abandon you. But my help is come from God. And I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. You might be dealing with a dead situation. A situation that seems like it's over. But I come to tell you in here, it's not over till God says over. I say it's not over until you win. Your condition is not the final conclusion. Praise God be for us. Who can be against us? The Bible said he said that David washed himself, anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and came to the house of God, and start to worship. Is anybody out there that can worship God in a dead situation? There was a man in the Bible by the name of Job. Job is no stranger to us. The Bible says he was a righteous man. He was an upright man. He was a man that feared God and screwed evil. But one day when Job came to church, the sons of God came to put themselves before the Lord. And the devil shows up in the prior meeting and challenged God. I said, Job is serving you for what he can get. But you remove the hedge from around him and you touch 
his body and he will curse you to your face. Glory to God. And the devil got permission from God. I want to tell somebody tonight the devil can't touch you unless he get permission. The devil can't touch you unless God give him permission. Glory to God. Because God got you locked in. He got you so protected. He got you secure. For the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous. And his ears are open to the cry. And the angel of the Lord and come from about them that fear him and keep his commandments. So don't be afraid of the devil. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But a power love and a sound mind. Lay your hands on your head and say a sound mind. I refuse to go loose. I refuse to lose it. I refuse to go mental. I've got a sound mind. For I'm wrapped up. I'm tied up in Jesus. Is anybody out there that God told you that he will keep your mind in perfect peace? Whose mind has stayed on thee? Oh God. And the Bible said that Job lost everything. And Job's wife said to Job, are you still holding on to your integrity? Why don't you curse God and die? But the Bible said that Job saved his head. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. David changed his garment. David washed his face. David, David, he came to the house of God. But Job, Job didn't wash his face. Job, Job, he didn't anoint his head. But Job did one thing. He shaved his head and stopped to worship. And shall the Lord give it? And the Lord take it. But blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible said that David, he went to the house of God and start to worship God. The reason we became stuck in a weeping place is because we neglect to give God praise. We neglect to worship. Oh God, in loss or gain, in sickness or health, up or down, God is still worthy. I say he's still worthy. Can I talk to somebody? I say in loss or gain, in sickness or health, up or down, in or out, God is still worthy. Is anybody out there? Lift up your hand and say, He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy to be glorified. So I come to tell you in here, wash your fears. Get up and let that devil know that I got Jesus and I got enough. Somebody clap your hands and give God a praise right there. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible said, after David went to church and worship, the next thing he did, he went home and he knew his wife Bathsheba and God gave him a son by the name of Solomon. Restoration will not happen until you decide to get up and wash your face. You've got to wash off those residue of pain. Wash your face means don't let the past residue, amen, uh, ruin your present. Wash your face can affect your can affect you literally. It means don't let the enemy, amen, hold you hostage by the things that you have been through. You've got to wash it off. Wash your past off. Wash it away. Wash your past off you so that it does not pollute your presence. Glory to God. I say you've got to wash your past off. So it does not pollute your present. There's some of you in here today. My God, 
You have washed your face spiritually. You don't even look like what you come out of. And so many of you have ruined where you are with from where they come from. All they can major on is what happened to them in the past. And you can see bitterness in their face. But God said me to tell you tonight. Get up and wash your face. Oh, sha. oh for there is a new beginning. There's a new day, a new anointing is coming your way. Wash your face, child of God. Don't let what you pass through and what you came out of define who you are or become a reflection of who you are. Wash your face. You've got to wash your past off you or else you will forfeit the opportunity of going forward. And people would not even talk about you if you just wash your face so that they will see God in you and not the pain that you have passed through. Right where you are, lift your hand and give God a praise tonight as a song, as we worship God in a song. I don't know, I don't know. Glory to God. You keep on doing it. Glory to God. He's in the room. Whatever the Lord wants us to sing tonight, just wash your face. Get up from your discouragement, child of God. Lift yourself. Pull yourself together. Get up from where you are. Wash your face. Wash off that sorrowful look. Wash off the pain of your face. Wash away the failures of your past. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let the devil know that I am delivered by the power of God. And I will prevail by the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash your face. Oh, wherever you are tonight. Heto Rabasata. Some of you have been through some things in your life. Glory to God that the enemy has placed a stigma on you. Sometimes people see you and remember the things that you came out of. But there comes a time in your life you forgot to forget those things which are behind. And forget those things that the enemy has put in your pathway that can become very destructive to your faith. You've got to shake yourself. You've got to wash yourself. You've got to take a new step and have a new attitude. Because God wants you to get up, to rise up, to stand up. And walk in the beauty of holiness. And walk in victory, power, and success. Tonight is your night. For God to break that thing off for you. Doesn't matter what the circumstances might be. Doesn't matter what your situation might be that you have to deal with. Tonight God is present to heal. He's present to deliver. And he's present to set you free. For Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He cannot change. He cannot lie. He surely will deliver. Right now I know that some of you hearing me tonight. That that devil have you cast down. Wallowing in sorrow. Wallowing in disappointment and discouragement. But you've got to spiritually wash yourself. And lift up yourself. And let the devil know that I am what I am by the grace of God. And if God can bring me out of that. He will bring me out of this. Get your oil bottle in your hand. While I pray and sanctify this oil. Glory to God. I can't hear no music. Glory to God. But God is good tonight. I say God is good tonight. Oh glory to God. I wish if I could hear me some. Oh God I thank you tonight. Glory to God. That's what happened when you're dealing with Amitra. But we thank God tonight. Amen. That Daniel God surely will deliver. He may not be there when you want him, child of God. But I guarantee you he's always on time. 
He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, get your oil bottle in your hand. We're going to pray. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we sanctify and consecrate this oil. Father God, for the use, oh God, and the purpose that it was purchased for. We ask that you consecrate it, sanctify tonight, God, that even as we anoint ourselves with oil, chains will be broken. Heavy burden will be lifted. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you'll give them, oh God, an encounter tonight. Intervene in the situation. Turn the circumstances around. Lord God, we believe it tonight for great things in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we anoint ourselves with oil, let the spirit of the living God breathe upon us tonight. Touch us tonight, God, and bring those who are to abound with chains in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. Now open that oil. Glory to God. Open that oil. And anoint yourself. Anoint your children. Anoint your children with oil. Anoint your parents with oil. Anoint, glory to God, Heto Shekha, your grandchildren with oil. Oh God, anoint them and say in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother Kelly, right where you are, we're praying for you. Anoint yourself with oil. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Anoint yourself with oil. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful Jesus tonight. Glory to God. Every chain, every shackle, every sickness, every disease has to be broken tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I thank you tonight. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Come straight from your phone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve tonight. Father God, we're going to pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against every sickness, every disease. I come against every diabolical attack upon the life of this child of God tonight. Lord God, as they anoint themselves with oil, I break down every stronghold. I release this anointing of God to bring healing and deliverance, oh God, to their sick body, to their infirmities tonight. Lord God, set the captive free in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, turn the situation around. Turn their circumstances around, Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray tonight that you cover this family under the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Let no weapon that formed against them, oh God, prosper. Lord God, I pray tonight that you wipe away the tears from their eyes. Lord God, step in that situation tonight. Step in that situation for this mother, this father, oh God, this grandmother, oh God, this spouse. Step in the situation tonight, God, and turn it around for them. Oh God, because you're a God of a turn around. You're a God, Lord, that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, move on behalf of your people today. Hear my cry, O God, and show yourself strong and mighty on the behalf of them that trust you tonight. Lord God, I break down every barrier, every satanic sabotage, every satanic embargo. I lift it off family tonight, God. I lift the spirit of sorrow off the family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break down every barriers tonight. Lord God, in Jesus' name, let your power flow tonight. Let your anointing rest upon your people tonight. The anointing that destroy yoke and remove burden. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against principalities and power. Every prince demon, oh God, that come against the people of God, oh God, to cause their demand. 
Christ. I bind it up in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I come tonight, Father. Those who are cast down. Those who God at the brink of throwing in the towel. Those who are at the brink of giving up tonight. I pray tonight, God, that you will encourage their hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to Iona Clark tonight. I pray, God, that you release and manifest your healing power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, take away the pain from her body. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray tonight for Lloyd Myers. Oh God, touch him in his body tonight. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord God, perform a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, touch Sherry on tonight. Oh God, clothe her in the right mind. Oh God, every diabolical attack. Oh God, upon her person. Every satanic attack upon her mind, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, turn it around for him. Turn it around tonight, God. I pray for Del Rose and John. I rebuke that COVID virus in their body tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, the complications in their bodies. Oh God, in Jesus' name. Set forth your mighty hand, God. And bring healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Brother Paris tonight, God. Lord God, you that has begun a good work in him. You will perform it. Lord God, you are a God that knows what we need. You are a God that looks at us tonight, God. I see we are feeble but men. But oh God, in the name of Jesus, we stand in the gap tonight, Father. And we block the attack of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, override the doctor's report. Oh God, tonight and perform a miracle. Give your people a miracle tonight. Those who are sick, Lord God. Touch, oh God, Brother Kelly tonight. Brother Tony, touch him in his body, God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I break down every barrier. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I draw the bloodline of protection around the people of God tonight. I draw the bloodline of protection around their property and their loved ones. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every plan of the devil tonight. I cancel every satanic activities. Oh God, that is plot against the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release fire upon them tonight. I release a new anointing upon your people tonight, God. The breakers anointed that break down every barrier. The breakers anointed that break up every satanic counsel. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you tonight. Oh God, move on behalf of your people tonight. Oh God, because you're our advocate. You're our intercessor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, those that are shut and those who need a job tonight. Oh God, give them favor. Open doors for them, God. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you tonight. I thank you for victory tonight. I thank you for breakthrough tonight. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us out. Thank you for bringing us all the way out. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for your word tonight. Oh God, how David, Lord God, lost his son. But oh God, he proved an example to us. Oh God, oh, even though we suffer loss, oh God, life is still going on. Even though we suffer affliction, but you say many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord 
deliver him out of them all. Father, we thank you. Lord, we want to thank you tonight. We want to thank you for everyone. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for your defender of the righteous. Thank you, Lord God, because you bring out those who are bound with chains. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on your heart. And say, in the name of Jesus. I command you right now. I command you right now. To be healed. To lift up yourself. To get up. In the name of Jesus Christ. And wash yourself. Anoint yourself with oil. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to get up. And come back to the house. And worship God. And giving him a praise. For your victory. In Christ Jesus. Is guaranteed. And the outcome. Is already set in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Lord touch the night. Break down barriers. Every day say. Every diabolical attack. Every prince demon. Every minion. Oh God, every stronghold, I pull it down now. In the name of Jesus, I pull down stronghold of sickness. In the name of Jesus, I pull down stronghold of infirmities. In the name of Jesus, I pull it down, 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 down. I pull down stronghold of sorrow and pain. Pull down stronghold of discouragement in the name of Jesus. Pull it down and lift up yourself and let that devil know that my God is a deliverer. Yes, Jesus, you deliver God. Deliver now. Save now in Jesus' name. Somebody clap your hands and give God a praise right where you are in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands. Well, clap your hands and stamp your feet and shake your holy body. Oh, shy. Pick it up and put it down. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. Come on and clap your hands. You might not get no music tonight, but clap your hands and give the Lord a praise. Glory to God. I said, clap. Hallelujah. Let your hands know you got the victory. Your mind know you got the victory. Your spirit knows that you got the victory. So clap. Let your hands know I got the victory. Stand up and stamp your feet. Let your feet know I got the victory. Somebody showed victory in Jesus name. God bless you tonight. Glory to God, glory to God. Wash your face. Get up and wash that thing off of you. Mama Massa. Wash that thing off of you. Wash off discouragement. Wash off your past because it will ruin your future. Wash your face, man. Wash off doubt and fear and unbelief and surprise those that know you've been through hell and still standing that they will look at you and say you don't even look like what you've been through you tell them it's because I wash my face God bless you tonight oh my God Woo! God bless you tonight thank God for the word thank God for everyone tonight whatever you do amen don't you ever let the enemy see the residue of what you came out of in your expression. Wash your face. All right, God bless you. Amen. May the grace of God be upon you and the peace of God be upon you. And all I can tell you, like I usually say, what good? See you when I see you. Grace and peace be unto you. In Jesus' name. Remember tonight, Evangelist Megan French will be preaching up there in Toronto, Canada. Eagles, you know how we do it. We got to support her. 
in Jesus' name. She'll be on a live stream in Zoom tonight. Amen. And the Zoom number tonight is 891 891 509 08 47 hour. 891 509 08470. And the passcode is 117714. And tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we've been prior with Pastor Wong out of Toronto, Canada, 6 to 7.30. You can't afford to miss this. It will be a mass prayer meeting tomorrow morning at 6 to 7.30. Grace and peace be unto you. God bless you. Walk good. See you when I see you. Thank God for my technician tonight. Evangelist Priscilla Smith. Come on, put your hands together for her tonight. In Jesus' name. Remember, the Zoom number tonight is 891-509-08470. And the password is 117714. There you go. My God, Evangelist Avril is right on top of it. 117714. Service is on now. God bless you, Jesus.